Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on our news. Massive change on the way to the country's immigration law. Find out what the Attorney General says Parliament is set to do. The Labor Director weighs in on that strike threat issued by the Nurses Union last week. Our news is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, a bill is in the works that would allow immigration officials to deport migrants who land illegally without taking them to court, as well as other significant changes to the Immigration Act. Jared Higgs tells us more. Amid several controversial court rulings challenging the constitutionality of several long-held immigration practices, a monumental law change is in the works that would allow government to deport migrants without the requirement of taking them to court. Attorney General Carl Bethel foreshadowed the changes in the Senate on Monday. No court proceedings of any kind will be required where persons are caught having entered the Bahamas without having first stopped at a port of entry by sea in any vessel without having first stopped at a lawful port of entry to declare their cargo and manifest. Um, no court proceedings be required if the boat here and you find the persons standing near it or, or in close proximity. Persons who are foreign nationality, or foreign nationality found in the vicinity of an illegally landed sloop or vessel who cannot show any kind of documentary evidence of legal status or status Okay, I know. Any documentary evidence of legal status or entitlement to land or to be in the Bahamas would be liable to arrest and summary removal from the Bahamas. Government recently began the practice of arraigning migrants who are captured at sea before a magistrate on the nearest island. Bethel says the change in the way migrants are handled was consistent with a recent Supreme Court decision that ruled that a Bahamas-born man, John Ronnie John Charles, had his constitutional rights violated when he was deported to Haiti. The Attorney General has appealed this ruling. Bethel says the new law will be based on legislation drafted in other Commonwealth jurisdictions. It is based on Australian law. We're working on it. It will be called something along the lines of the Unlawful Maritime Entry Bill. The idea is that it will, it will allow for immigration officers, first of all, it will give them a duty to ensure that persons are returned home after due process and that those whose purpose um, um, whose boats, etc., are used to smuggle can be um, seized, sunken, whatever. Bethel noted that the Australian law that this one will be based on was designed to stem the flow of Vietnamese migrants to that country. He also noted that this law is extremely important for the Bahamas as the flow of migrants northward from Haiti continues to be a significant regional challenge. I don't want the Bahamas to be like um, our neighbor, one of our neighbors to the south, a very small neighbor where when the migrants um, were, were, were running past the office of the prime minister and etc were saying they coming to take over that they coming to take over that country that ain't happening in this bahamas now i want everybody to remember that if you're found in close proximity to a sloop that is illegally landed or on it the immigration act already places an evidential burden on anybody found in the bahamas who is not a bahamian who doesn't have documents to show that they have an entitlement to be in the Bahamas. Back in February, Immigration Minister Brent Simonet revealed that the government is looking at developing an entirely new immigration law. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. Well, 50 illegal Haitian migrants apprehended in waters off Inagua on Friday are already back in Haiti. They were repatriated on the U.S. vessel Reliance after being captured during a joint effort between the U.S. Coast Guard and the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. After receiving an alert from the U.S. Coast Guard about a 60-foot Haitian sloop in the southern Bahamas, officers on board HMBS Kamalami sailed to the area to investigate. The sloop was discovered 60 nautical miles west of Inagua. 50 migrants were retrieved from the Haitian sloop before it entered Cuban waters and was intercepted by Cuban authorities. And the Attorney General today tearing into criticisms of the multi-billion dollar Oban Energy's deal in a move to allay what he called the unfounded fears based on allegations. However, he noted that if Oban Energies decides to pull out of the deal because it finds certain environmental requests made by the government unreasonable, the developer can hit the road. At any stage, including stage one, 
the government decides that the development as proposed cannot be done in an environmentally safe and sustainable way, the government can propose additional safeguards for environmental protection. Under Clause 5.1, if the developer feels that the safeguards reasonably proposed by the government are not commercially reasonable, the developer has the option to abandon the, the project. However, the Attorney General says what is certain is if the government determines that any of the developer's plans for the project are not environmentally sustainable or safe and the developer decides to go, they cannot sue the government because it has a contractual right under Clause 5.1. He added that if the developer considers any environmental mandates put in place by the government to be unreasonable, they can say, so long, bye-bye. Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist yesterday told the Nassau Guardian that the government has the right to terminate the Oban project if it fails to address concerns raised by an environmental impact assessment. The proposed project has come under fire for the possible environmental impact an oil refinery may have on Grand Bahama. All of these allegations are untrue. The Deputy Prime Minister has, since this weekend, repeatedly stated that the same that I say right now. Bethel added that the agreement is clear when it states what can and cannot be done before the soil is turned on the project. Before they lay the first shovel in the ground, they have, an, have to have an EIA for every stage. The government under Clause 5.1 must be given a copy of that environmental impact assessment. Bethel says controversy surrounding the Oban deal has also shed light on the antiquated process of the Bahamas Investment Authority and the basic application procedure, which he says has failed to keep up with technology in the age of ever-evolving information. If you look at the form, just the form they asked people, which was the same form devised 20 years ago, merely asking people for a current police record and character references, their social security number, and basic financial information, a letter from the bank saying, oh, he maintains account with six figures. As required by the present permit application form, it, this is not enough to fully explore the character and antecedents of any potential investor. They, they are now being changed, I can tell you. They are not, in fact, they have been now being changed. There's nothing that comes to the NEC now. The Prime Minister say, I want to see all the due diligence. Uh, we like this idea, get the due diligence. I want to see what you have. Oh, oh we got the usual, we have, no, that's not enough. I can tell you, the Prime Minister said mistakes were made. He said he was going to clean that up. I assure you, even the most desirable project isn't going anywhere without the fullest background um, due diligence. Complete. Amid growing calls for Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis to act on the appointment of a substantive Chief Justice, Attorney General Carl Bethel says the Minnis administration would not be distracted by those with agendas. Bethel also had a strong reaction to questions over whether the Prime Minister has asked him to serve in that position, asserting the appointment of a substantive Chief Justice is an issue for Dr. Minnis. Right. Okay. Are you able to say how long before the government will appoint a Chief Justice? I can see you later, yeah? That's not my remit. Right? That, listen, I don't want y'all pulling uh, move on me. It's not my remit. Okay. That is a matter that is exclusively under the Constitution, under the purview of the Prime Minister. It is not my job to make a comment on the way in which a constitutional officer exercises a constitutional um, 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 duty. Others who have other agendas may make all the comments they wish. Under the Constitution, as I've said before, the Prime Minister has the, the authority where there is a vacancy to make an acting appointment. That is his prerogative under the Constitution. State Minister for Legal Affairs Ellsworth Johnson urged Minnis to exercise his constitutional authority and appoint a substantive Chief Justice without delay. However, the junior minister apologized for speaking out of turn after he was criticized by former Court of Appeal President Dame Joan Sawyer and his predecessor in the role of Minister of State for Legal Affairs Damien Gomez. Minnis has remained silent on the matter, telling reporters last week that he was going home to make stew fish. 
The Bahamas Bar Association, other members of the judiciary and the wider legal profession have been vocal in their support of acting Chief Justice Stephen Isaacs, who has acted in the post on eight different occasions. Thank you. Listen, 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 listen. I've said all I have to say. I hope you understand that. Okay, thank you. Back in February, a call for judges and magistrates to abandon their posts in protests at the lack of an appointment fell largely on deaf ears. The Chief Justice of the Bahamas is appointed by the Governor General on the recommendation of the Prime Minister after consultation with the Leader of the Opposition. In other news, in recent days, the Bahamas Nurses Union threatened industrial action over a dispute with the Public Hospitals Authority regarding a shift system. Director of Labor Robert Farquharson revealed both sides met for a conciliatory meeting. Farquharson says based on that meeting, the strike threat has, for now, been neutralized. Jasmine Brown reports. While tempers flared last week, Farquharson says he managed to get both sides to sit down to a meeting on Friday where they ironed out their issues. That meeting lasted about three hours, where we took the time to identify all of the issues associated with the dispute at the Public Hospitals Authority. Last Wednesday, the BNU threatened industrial action and accused the PHA of instituting union-busting tactics. Williams said the BNU intended to apply to the Department of Labor for permission to hold a strike vote amid tensions over the shift system. According to Farquharson, that is yet to happen. There is no application for a strike vote um, before the minister. Um, and both parties agree to work together to try and resolve the matter. Farquharson confirmed that he met with both sides on Friday. According to the Labor Director, BNU officials, Trade Union Congress President Obi Ferguson, the PHA Managing Director and other officials attended Friday's meeting. The meeting, in my opinion, was a very good meeting, a very productive meeting. Um, um, both sides agree that there is a problem. Um, both sides agree that the problem has to be addressed on an urgent basis and we designed a roadmap to have that, that, that problem address and solve. Farquharson declined to give details of their current agreement, noting it is still a sensitive issue. However, Nurses Union President Amancha Williams said that they came to no conclusion after that meeting. She added that the BNU would still like to have that strike certificate in hand as they continue their negotiations. Last week, Williams told the media that the union was concerned after learning that expatriate nurses on contracts were asked to work 12-hour shifts. Williams said the union fought against the shift system for its members and noted that the PHA did not consult with the union regarding the new shift system for non-union members. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Still to come on our news, Bahamians blast changes to breadbasket item prices. That and more when our news returns.